medcram.com. Welcome to another MedCram lecture. We're going to talk about delivery of oxygen to the tissues and the pathway that it gets to the tissues through the lung, the bloodstream, and then finally onto the tissues. And this is important because it involves a lot of physiology. It involves how oxygen diffuses into the blood and the equations that are used. And this is very easily testable because they can use equations to minimize the answers and try to get you to think about these equations. So let's go through this using the major equation, which I'm going to write for you. So the delivery of oxygen, which we'll abbreviate DO2, is equal to the cardiac output, which I'll say is CO, times the content of the arterial blood, which I'll abbreviate CAO2. So cardiac output is basically in liters per minute, and the concentration of oxygen in the arterial blood is basically units of millimeters of oxygen in deciliters of blood. So the basic equation here is, again, the delivery of oxygen is the cardiac output, how fast we can deliver oxygen in this patient to times the content of that fluid. Now we can break this down even further, as we'll see. The cardiac output, as you know, is really the stroke times the heart rate and the content, the oxygen content of the blood is actually an equation that you should know which is 1.34 which is a fudge factor basically times the hemoglobin t concentration times the saturation of that hemoglobin molecule plus 0.003 times the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood. Now that sounds a little complicated, but let's break this down. Okay, so the cardiac output, as you know, from uh, any kind of a discussion in cardiology is simply the stroke volume times how many times that stroke happens uh, in a minute, and that'll tell you what the cardiac output is. So basically this is the how many liters per minute you're pumping. And that many liters per minute times the amount of oxygen in those liters is going to tell you how much oxygen you're going to be delivering to the peripheral tissue. Well, the content of blood, the content of oxygen in that blood is an interesting portion here. There's two components. Notice there's the first component and there's the second component. And that's very important here because you see when there is an oxygen molecule, let's take a look here at the alveolus. Here's the alveolus and the oxygen molecule which diffuses into the, goes into that alveolus is going to come in contact with the pulmonary artery and then it's going to become oxygenated and turn into the pulmonary vein. Now, when that happens, this oxygen molecule is going to diffuse down into the plasma in the pulmonary circulation. When that oxygen molecule is in solution, we'll say, is dissolved in the plasma, we can detect that by measuring the partial pressure of oxygen in the plasma. This is known as the PO2, the partial pressure of oxygen. However, something happens as soon as that oxygen molecule goes into solution in that plasma. What happens is that a red blood cell comes by, corpuscle, Here's a side view of it. And it goes in to the bag of hemoglobin, known as the red blood cell, and it binds to your hemoglobin molecule. When it does that, it essentially comes out of solution and precipitates with that hemoglobin molecule. The only way you can detect that now is by detecting the saturation of this hemoglobin molecule. So there's two forms of oxygen in the blood. There's the oxygen which is dissolved in the plasma, and then there's the oxygen molecules which are combined or connected or precipitated to the hemoglobin molecule. And that here is what is going on. This part of the equation, in terms of oxygen in the blood, is the part that represents that oxygen which is bound to hemoglobin. So you can see there's a hemoglobin concentration factor and there's a saturation factor. So the amount of oxygen 
in the blood is directly proportional to a fudge factor of 1.34 times the concentration of hemoglobin that's in the blood to begin with times the saturation of that hemoglobin molecule in the blood. And that tells you how much oxygen is there. The other portion of it, which is this part down here, tells you how much oxygen is carried in the blood by simply the amount that is dissolved in the blood. And as you can see, it's a very small proportion. So therefore, the majority of the oxygen which is carried in the blood is carried in the form of oxyhemoglobin and not in the form of partial pressure of oxygen that is dissolved. That's a key point here. It's a key point because they're going to ask you where most of this oxygen is coming from. Now let me rewrite that equation or that part of the equation again. We've said that the content of oxygen in the blood is equal to 1.34 times the hemoglobin concentration times the saturation of O2 plus 0 0.003 times the PaO2. So if I wanted to increase the concentration or the carrying ability of oxygen in the blood in general, would it be more important for me to increase the saturation or the PaO2? And it would be more important for you to increase the saturation just algebraically based on where this equation is. Now, how is that boiled down? Well, there's something called the hemoglobin binding curve, which I'm sure you've all heard of by this point. Okay? This describes the relationship between the PO2, which is what we were just talking about, or the PaO2, and the saturation, percent saturation in the blood. Okay, so it kind of looks like this. Okay, and this actually just keeps going on and on, and it kind of asymptotes with 100%, and you've got 50% kind of in this range right here. And the point of this is that once your saturation gets up high enough into the 90s, you can have, so here's 90%. You can have increasing PO2 levels, which are only going to modestly increase your saturation levels. So it gets to a point that increasing the PaO2 will increase the oxygen content by a very small amount, and it will only increase this part by a very small amount. And why is that important? That's important to understand that there is a diminishing marginal utility on increasing the amount of partial pressure of oxygen that you're delivering to a patient because you're not gonna get that much more saturation because of the hemoglobin binding curve. And that's important because it's the saturation, which is part of the big part of the equation, which determines the content of oxygen in the blood. Okay, so let me show you where this would be practical on a test. Let me rewrite that equation again so I can show you how this matters. So going back to the first equation, the delivery of oxygen to the peripheral tissue generally speaking, is equal to the cardiac output times the oxygen content of the blood. Let's expand that once again. We know that cardiac output is heart rate times stroke volume, and that the content of oxygen is equal to uh, 1.34 times the hemoglobin times the SaO2, or the saturation, plus 0 0.003 times the PaO2, and then all of this is multiplied by itself. Okay, so we can come up with an equation here. Let's say we've got a patient um, whose saturation is, let's say it's 92%. Here's the question. The question is, which of the following will increase the delivery of oxygen the most. And then here are the answer choices. Number one, we can increase the stroke volume by 10%. Number two, we can increase the heart rate by 5%. Number three, we can increase the hemoglobin by 12%. Number four, we could increase the SaO2, the saturation, by 5%. Or number five, we could increase the PaO2 by 30%. So which one of these is going to increase oxygen delivery to the tissues? Now, 
to those uninitiated uh, or confused or didn't see this lecture, you would be tempted to say, if I increase the PAO2 by 30%, just numerically, that's going to improve my oxygen delivery. I, obviously, if I give more oxygen, I'm going to be able to deliver more oxygen. But however, if you look at this algebraic equation mathematically, you can see that the smallest component of this equation is this. And so increasing this amount by 30% is going to be multiplied by a very small number, and you're not going to get the biggest bang for your buck in terms of delivery of oxygen. So that's not the right answer. The rest of these issues, so stroke volume, heart rate, hemoglobin, and saturation are all pretty equivalent because we're multiplying all of these things together. Okay, so all of this is multiplied together. So this going up by 5% times this going up by 5% plus this going up by 5% or this going up by 5% are all going to have pretty much the same equivalence in terms of the improvement in the delivery of oxygen. And so in that case, you'd have to say then that increasing the hemoglobin concentration by 12% will have a greater effect on the delivery of oxygen than, than the stroke volume going up by 10% or the heart rate going up by 5%. Now, what about the saturation going up by 5%? Yeah, if this went up by 5%, that would be nice, but still not as good as increasing the hemoglobin by 12%. And this is the type of test question that you might see. And it has to do with the fact that you understand how most of the oxygen is getting to the peripheral tissues. And thanks for joining us.